Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Lenten Devotional Services from the book of Psalm 22. And this morning, we're going to look at verse 23. My name is the Reverend Anthony Thompson, Holy Trinity Reformed Episcopal Church, and I'm here today giving you devotions from St. John Lutheran Church, of which the pastor is the Reverend David Butler. Along with my colleagues and brothers in Christ, the Reverend Dr. Houghton Singling, the Reverend Dr. Marshall Blaylock, and Reverend Al Zadig. So today we look at verse 23 of Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise him, and you offspring of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. Jesus' sole purpose for suffering and dying on the cross was to save us from our sins and to glorify God his Father. In John the 12th chapter 27th verse, before his crucifixion, Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. You see, Jesus wanted to be delivered from his horrible death, but he knew that God sent him into the world to die for our sins in our place. So Jesus said no to his human desire in order to obey and glorify God, his Father. Jesus laid aside his own desires, gave up his glory, left his heavenly home, became a mere man, experienced pain and suffering and death on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins and his Father could be glorified. Therefore, since God gave us his son Jesus to redeem us from our sins, it should be our reasonable duty, our reasonable service to do what Jesus said in verse 23. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in all of him, all you offspring of Israel. Every one of us should praise the Lord and glorify the Lord. In Romans, the 12th chapter, first verse, Paul tells us that in view of the mercy that God had on our lives, we have to praise him. We have to glorify him with our bodies as a loving sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. There was a young Christian lady named Adele Pollard who spent her entire life teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And her long-hearted desire was to travel to Africa to teach that same gospel. Everything she needed to make this happen seemed to fall right in place. Then one day, out of the blue, she discovered that her financial support that she had was no longer available. Not being able to go to Africa, became she became very depressed and very discouraged. Her depressive and discouraged state plagued her body with diabetes and led Adele to a string of bad relationships. She was 40 years old and still single. And one night, as Adele sat in a church, she thought about these things. She said, here I am with the God-given gifts of teaching and writing, but unable to use them the way I want to use them. Her heart was aching so much that she couldn't even utter a prayer. And as she thought about all these things, there was a woman in the church sitting right next to her. And this woman said something very simple. She said, it really doesn't matter what you do with me, Lord. Have your way with my life. These words stuck in Adelaide's mind, and suddenly she realized that her whole life had been spent pursuing her own goals, doing what she wanted to do with God. Instead of asking God, God, what would you have me to do for you? How can I praise and glorify your holy name? She was thinking what she wanted to do for him. And the story goes on to tell us that Adelaide walked home from church, and the Spirit of the Lord led her to read the Old Testament, Jeremiah 18, chapter 1 through the 4th verses. And it reads like this. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you a message. So I went down to the potter's house and saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred, defective in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. 
Adelaide discovered that, like Clay, she had defects. She was stiff, stubborn, and wanted to have her own way with God. But God had his way with her. Through her trials and tribulations, God molded Adelaide's life into one shape after another. He loosened her up, broke her stubbornness, removed all her defects, cleansed her soul from sin, and made her life what he wanted it to be for him. And as Adelaide meditated upon the relation of the potter and the clay, the words of a hymn formed in her mind. And before she went to bed that night, she composed all four verses of the popular hymn, Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Adelaide discovered one thing. She was not able to make it to Africa to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ like she wanted to. But when God had his own way with her life, she was able to praise and glorify God the way that God wanted her to praise and glorify him. She taught the gospel not only to Africa, but to the whole world as she praised and glorified God through the songs she composed. Instead of telling God what we want God to do, we should be asking, Lord, what can I do for you? How can I sacrifice my life for you? Lord, help me to put aside my desire. Help me to put aside my time. Help me to put aside my money, my ways, and my worldly pursuits so that I can use all my resources, all my energy to praise and glorify your holy name. So, I leave you with this. It should not matter what God does with your life. Just let God have his way with your life so that you can fear God and praise him, so that you can stand in all of him and glorify his holy name with that good, pleasing, perfect, and will that God has for your life. Amen, and God bless you all.